Please watch the video in high quality. In this video, we will learn how to save 3D model data to file at one time in Unity. So currently I have a model. If I click Save Mesh button, the, uh, the data of that model will be saved on a default folder here. And if we open it, we could see the uh, content of that mesh over here. To start, I will select the camera and reorient it in a way that we have a good uh, angle on the uh, model. So I will change the X position to 2, the Y to 2, and the Z to minus 2. And the rotation on the X would be 35, and on the Y would be nine, minus 45 and 0 on the Z. Just we have a good view on the, on the model we have. Next, I will create a um, uh, UI uh, button element. So right-click UI and then button text mesh pro and click import text mesh pro essentials. Once that is done, uh, I will close it and we'll rechange uh, the button name to uh, mesh save or save mesh button it's up to you what you want to call it and then uh, we'll change the uh, pivot to zero on the x one on the y and the anchor to top left and zero position x and zero position y it will change the width to 250 and the height to 50. And then I'll select the text of the mesh and we'll change that to um, uh, save mesh. We could just have a quick look at the button. If I select the button element and click F on my keyboard and just orbit around a little bit and then we could see it around here yeah it looks fine i could just change the text or the font size to be somewhere around 40 bit bigger okay yeah that's look okay next i'll create an empty game object and we'll call it save mesh so that it will hold the scripts inside and inside the assets i'll create a new folder call it scripts and inside i will open a c sharp or create a new c sharp file we'll call it save mesh once it's created i'll just drag it and drop it in the new save mesh empty game object and make sure it is there so i'll just select it and drop it here select the game object and mesh uh, and make sure that a new script is here i'll double click on the script file to open it in visual studio inside our script file i'll just paste a new com uh, code and i will walk you through uh, its parts so um, to start i uh, uh, use the new namespace is system.txt which I will we will need for string builder and the system.io that we need for the to use for the file class and its uh, method over here and then uh, at the beginning I had a public uh, game object and call it model and inside that public model game object I created a mesh using a script over here and attach that mesh into the model game object and it, to learn how to create mesh in a form of script from a model you have I have created a, a YouTube video uh, on how to convert 3d model to script in unity and I'll put the link in the description of this video Next, uh, 
we define two methods that we're going to use later to convert the model data to a string. The first method take a vector three array and convert it into a string. And uh, the way it works, you pass it the vector three and you pass it a string parameter called split string. And what's behind that it's what it does this method it's for example here we have vector 3 component x uh, uh, space y space z of that first vector 3 and then it put the split string you pass in this case i pass v and vertical bar and then it start with the second uh, vector and third vector and so on and so forth. And the concept behind it is later when we read the data from the file in the next video, we will use these uh, split tags as identifier to tell us the, 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 that the first vector has vector three has finished and the next vector is started. So this is just an indicator. We'll, we, we will use later to read, make it easier to read the data that we write in this uh, tutorial into a, a file. Okay, so what does this method, uh, how, how it works? It's first uh, use a string builder and string builder is type of advanced type of a, a string. And we use it because when you append or modify that string builder, uh, it won't result into creating a new uh, a data address. It just keep the same address data of that uh, variable or string builder and it's keep so it's safe on the uh, on the memory using it will save uh, as memory okay so here we loop through the vector three array and then we uh, start appending to the string builder the vector three dot x and with a space and then vector 3.y and space and the z dimension of vector 3 then we put the split string uh, that we pass here and we wind up into so getting something like that and at the end because at the end we always append split string so at the end of that process the for loop process we just need to rem remove the last one in in uh, in these lines here and then we return the uh, string uh, builder by returning it as a string and convert it to a string similarly in the this method would uh, convert uh, an integer or array of integers into a string and it just return it into into the form of integer space integer space and so on and so forth so it's it's looping through the array of integers and append them with a space in between them and then remove the last space and then return it as a string a next method we all we also we going to be using is a method that convert a color into a string so what it does is takes a color as parameter and then uh, append or uh, convert its red r and then space green space blue space and alpha component into uh, this form of a string and then return it as a string then we have a we have a public method later we're gonna attach it to the button we created in the editor so whenever a user click, click that but button and the, it, this method would be called and what it does it called the file uh, class and then write all text and then it will call a default uh, location in uh, it's it's defined by unity it's called the application persistent data path and uh, that's so that's a default designated folder you would have uh, uh, if you're dealing with unity and to to verify that location of the folder we just debug.log it later so to help us to identify it and then fi find it out so uh, uh, so in this video we will show how to save the data to unity default application persistent data path folder location 
But if you want to learn how to open and save files using a native standalone file browser at runtime in Unity, I have a video on how to do that, and I put that in, I will put that in the description of this video. Also, if you want to learn how to load a model at runtime in Unity from the your folder browser, or the native folder browser, I also have a video on that, and I'll put that in the description. But in this video, uh, for Simplicity will just gonna be in, uh, saving the model data into the default application persistent data path folder. So the write all text method will take a, a path which is we defined here, and then um, the uh, here would be the name of the file you had with an extension. So it could the extension you could be anything you want so i named the file by default that we're gonna save it model and the ex uh, the extension uh, or the format or the the, the ex extension of the file would be uh, in this case i chose it to be da lab but you could make it anything you want could be txt or you could name it uh, as an with the name of your company or the extension of or you would like and then you will pass it the data in a form of string that you want to write into that file. And here we, I have a method that converts the model data to string. If you pass it a reference to the model, the model we had uh, defined here and assign a mesh through a script to it here. And then uh, also similar to these method, it's use a, 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 a string splitter, and we pass here as mo and vertical bar as a split uh, of the uh, of that string result result string. And, and um, similarly, the purpose of that. So later, when we read the data from the file, we could we, we these uh, strings splitters uh, uh, st uh, split strings would help us identify the end of a portion of a data and the beginning of the new section of the data. And here uh, we just debugging the location of that folder so we could identify it easily. So this method will take a reference to a game object uh, and then the split string uh, in a form of string. So Similarly, it will define a, a string builder and then it will loop through the model components that has a render uh, component into it. So it's basically loop through the, uh, the children of the model and then fetch their meshes. So it gets the meshes through model get components in children of type mesh filter and the i iterator uh, and then dot mesh. So we get the mesh, all the meshes in the children, and then we'll get the material using the get components in children mesh renderer and passing the iterator and calling the method, uh, 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 the material method. Then it append into the string builder the uh, through the mesh to string that the mesh in a form of string and we will go through this uh, using this method mesh to string uh, uh, and then embed the split uh, string and then the mesh to string it's a method that take two parameter the mesh and the material color and the as well a uh, 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 the uh, split string and in this case is m and vertical bar similar to the other method we went through and at the end is just remove the last uh, split string uh, that will that was appended at the end of this loop and then it return a string so the last method the mesh to string it's take a mesh and the color and the split string which is m in m vertical bar here and also define a string builder and then append the uh, so it's create uh, the mesh it converted into a form of a string in which it has the vertices uh, and then the splits uh, string between them and then the normals and then it lists all the triangles and the indices and the 
the mesh topology and the color of the mesh and it utilizes the methods we, we defined earlier that this one here convert vector uh, three array to string and the integer array to string and the color to string. So the result would be the mesh and the color data, all of their components will be in one uh, string with the splitters between them so that when we read them, we know when the vertices end and when the normals end and so on and so forth. So if we save the file and go back to our editor, we need to select the button so we could assign the new script to it and the new script is part of the save mesh uh, game object. So I've select the button, go down to its own click and press plus, and then drag the game object that has a sc the script inside, and then go to its save mesh. And remember, we have a public method called on click save. We just select that. Uh, and uh, now, uh, uh, if I hit play, I'll just change the to full HD resolution. And we have this model. If I click Save Mesh, we'll see that the the console will put print out the folder location. So if I just select it and copy it and then I'll open my folder explorer and base the extension, uh, the, the file location here, I'll have the model.da lab uh, file saved. If I open it, double click on it, we'll see that the mesh uh, uh, or the cube model component is written here as a, a file. So this is it. This is how we could save a mesh uh, to file at runtime in Unity. And the next video, I'll put that the link to it into this to the description will show us how to read these the data from this file and open them or load them into a model inside unity thank you please like subscribe and click the notifications button to help me make more videos like this